So thank you everyone for jumping on. Um, as I was just mentioning before I started recording, started this, I've just come back from Peru yesterday. I think it was yesterday. I'm still like suffering jet lag, if you will, but I've got a crazy amount of energy, no sleep. Really, three hours max for a night. Last night, I think it was like 12 o'clock and I woke up at two because the hours are all different. I think there's 15 hours difference in time, even while I was over there. But um, with the time difference, the jet lag, I didn't sleep the, the last night leading into it. Um, but everything we've done over there too, sleep was <laughs> probably not a priority. Um, we had plenty of time to sleep, plenty of time to rest, plenty of time to relax. But for me personally, what I was going through and what I was working on on such a deep level, there was times there where my head was just going, whoosh, so much stuff coming to me, so much stuff coming up, so much stuff I wasn't aware of. Um, when I say stuff, like stuff from my past, stuff from like way back, way, way back, then I'm like, well, why is this, why is this coming up? And a lot of my, my questions like, why is this coming up, got answered while I was away. But to start this, I think it's important, like, why did I decide to go to Peru? What, what was it? Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start straight away. I don't know if you guys know anything about ayahuasca, um, wachuma. They're the two, two of the, the plant medicines we used over there. There were several others with herbs and other plant medicines as well. Um, but they were the two main ones. And I'll go further into the structure of everything after of how it rolled out. Without going into too much detail, too, because there's always got to be a little bit of secrecy around um, these retreats because you're going with expectations and sometimes you can sort of block yourself off from being vulnerable. Um, big reason why I'm not going to share absolutely everything. Um, the other thing is too, is involved with other people that were there and that's not my, um, it's not up to me to share any of their, their stuff that came out. That's, that would be not right from my point of view. Um, but Late last year or early last year, and I know Lee's on here and a couple of people I've spoken to, it was like really getting an interest for like ancient civilizations and things like that. Peru especially. Um, things like the book that I was listening to, the audio book, The Celestine Prophecy. All this stuff was leading to South America, Peru, ancient civilizations. It was really interesting how it all came up. And they say with ayahuasca and things like that, you get a calling. Like you get a sense, you've got to do something, you get a calling to do something more. And it's the same when you're on a journey, a personal growth journey, and like you get a calling, you get this feeling that keeps coming up. Why is this coming up? What do I got to do here? Why do I have to follow through with this? And that was me all the way through last year and um, leaving beast mode and, and going through all the retreats and not knowing what was there. I've been pretty lost, I would say, for probably about four or five months, really pushing hard in certain areas, really, really going back to all the basics and not getting where I wanted to go and shit kept showing up and I got sick. And um, just before I got sick, um, Regan Hillier, who I'm really, really good friends with, she's had just a crazy turnaround herself in the last six months with big emotions coming out of last year along with myself. And we just started chatting. She goes, hey, um, I'm thinking about doing something in the jungle of Peru. And my, my mind just went, boom, whatever this is, I want to do it. And it was literally as simple as that. We were talking for a little while, backwards and forwards for a few days. And the more it unfolded, I didn't even ask about the plant mess. And I didn't even ask about working with shamans. I, I, I didn't care. I had this such an overwhelming feeling that I had to do something. There was something calling me there. I had no idea. And as it played out, it's, it's like I say, there's a calling in this. There's so much more, guys to life as most of us see it than just the day-to-day -day things that go on. Like nature is the boss. She's the boss. She's on such a higher level, so higher frequency than all us humans. You get a calling from that, and that's what I've had for a while now, and it led to me go to Peru. But so much to get there, so many things, so many decisions I had to make, so many things. I had to sell a lot of stuff. I had to make room, which was so ideal for the actual structure of the retreat or the event because it was about surrendering. It was about letting go. It was about letting go of stuff that doesn't serve you. And without me knowing all this stuff was not serving me and my higher purpose to get there. It was, it was clogging up, was taking up space, emotional space. And with everything else that came out, oh, wow, it's, it's been a relief. And 
I think the reason I've got so much energy too, and I'll, I'll get to some of the work we've done linked into the body too. Um, it just feels like a, a weight, the weight of the world's been lifted. Like we all do this guys. And I really want you to take note of this and have a look at yourselves and how much you do hold on to. And it actually blocks in because you're consciously aware of blocks in what's in your unconscious from your past, from little things that might, you mightn't think of. It was a big thing for me. We put up our guard. We don't want people to find out about stuff and we actually forget about it because we suppress it that bloody deep that you really needed. I, I needed this. I needed this so much to unlock why was all this shit showing up in my life? Why were things not going to plan? Why was I lacking energy? Why was I sick? Why was I just not communicating how I wanted to? Why was my businesses not working how I wanted to? Where are all the people that were showing up before? And even though there's amazing people like you guys in my environment, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't aiding my purpose. I knew my purpose, but I was taking action. It was, it was dead end action. It was draining. It was all this stuff showing up. And the journey in Peru was just unbelievable. It was unbelievable. But to travel there in itself, like I say, I had to make a lot of things happen. I had to make a few big decisions. I had to cut some people. I had to cut some, 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 <laughs> oh, wow. I had to make some huge decisions, let's put it that way. And on a financial level, on a personal level, environment, the people around me, the people I kept around, nothing personal. But at the time, I thought, well, this is what I've got to do to make this happen. And Thank God I'm with the Travel Club. I've got, to, I've got to throw that in there, guys. It's not about this. It's not about it. But thank God, because I saved so much traveling in between. I had to stay at two hotels on the trip. And I probably would have saved about 600 bucks. So that was huge in itself. And it was so bloody convenient going to a country where I can't speak Spanish. Hola and gracias. Didn't get me far. So having that to stay at hotels with, uh, the concierge and all that sort of thing was really, really awesome. I had to drop that in, guys. Um, that helps so much in the people involved. Um, even our local Peruvian WV style, um, Louis Guzman, uh, he was very handy on my way over there. But that was a big thing. It's like I remember back when I went to Bali and all I'd seen was what was on the news, the Bali bombings, terrorists, all this sort of shit, third world country, all that. And these sorts of memories come back to me when I was going to Peru. I'm like, I'm going there on a tight budget. I don't know anyone. I don't know the language. I don't know where I'm going, really. I've got some flights to go out in the middle of nowhere in Peru. And all these sorts were coming up. And it's probably a big reason I didn't sleep that much. But I got to Peru, and they seemed really, really nice after I got bombarded by taxi drivers coming in. Um, but I got in there, and I'm like, I don't know what's going to go on, but I go back to one of my original points with ayahuasca. I don't know if you know much about it, guys. Do proper research if you do. There's some cool audio books out there. Don't just Google it and like you'll get stuff that comes up. Oh, people die from all this. But I'm going to get to a very, very important point about that soon. Um, but I didn't really look into it. I watched two videos on it. I'd, one was an audio book. Went for an hour about a guy's personal experience with it. And he even outlined, he goes, this is not the same for everyone. And I wasn't even aware of the Washuma, um, which was the other one, the other plant medicine we had. I had no idea. And my whole reasoning behind that is like, I'm going over there just to release whatever. I'm going to trust in whatever process has been put in place by Regan Hillier and Wampa, whatever they've put in place. So I'm just going to trust it. And as I got there, I was... I was crazy nervous. I went to Tarapoto Airport where no one spoke English at all. I couldn't even buy a bottle of water because I didn't even know how to say water. And you can probably imagine that's, that's out of comfort zone in itself. And it's a big part about personal growth. You hear it all the time and I don't think many people get it. There's so many situations where you can be out of your comfort zone. And that for me was, I'm like, what's going to go on? There was no one else there. And I caught up with Regan and Narelle and Narelle's mum at there. Lima Airport on the way, which was great. That made me a fair bit calmer. But I got in there and <laughs> aqua or something like that is what the water is. I finally got that after half an hour. I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen here. This is crazy. This is without the retreat, the event starting, I had no idea. But um, finally, Regan and the others come in and we got on one of them tut tut things and went out into the jungle not far out of Tarapoto and in the bush huts there and. Yeah, I, I had no idea, but I had no real expectations. 
because I didn't look into it too much. I went there for that reason. I didn't want to go in there and think, oh, this is going to happen. This person said this. Oh, people die from this. It's called little death and all these sorts of things. And I don't know if you guys have got an understanding of it. And if you've looked into it, there's so much out there and it's like anything. You hear, you always hear the worst stuff. And I'm like, I absolutely trust whatever this process is. If this is knowledge and plant medicine, whatever it is being passed down, shamanic knowledge for thousands and thousands of years, there's got to be something so bloody powerful involved with it. I'm just going to surrender to the process. And it became the theme of the whole time there. It really did become the theme of it is like surrendering. It's something I've got. I've got notes here and surrender came up so much. Like it was crazy. And I think I'll put a note here. I've got pages of I choose, release. It's somewhere in there, but especially from a man's perspective, like especially with Beast Mode last year, and that was such a learning curve for myself, working with so many men and learning on my own journey that we're so, we're so judged and so constricted and controlled the way we are as a man to not surrender, to not let people in, to not let people see our feelings and our emotions, to put it, to tuck it away in the darkness. And that came up so much for me in this. It's like surrender, 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 let go. Because what happens is, and what I found on a physical level, we'll do anything. The way we're conditioned to hold shit in, we'll do just about anything. We will lie. We will be quiet. We'll avoid situations. Like, and it's no good. It's unhealthy. It's unhealthy on a cellular level. There's so much in this. And I do apologize, guys, if I go off on tangents here because I learned so much in this short amount of time, more than I've ever learned in, I think, my whole last two years. Nothing discrediting everything I have learned, but in a jam-packed thing here, it's, it's still mind-blowing. It's still mind-blowing. But once we got there, like I say, I caught up, met the guys, bit uncomfortable. I haven't met half the guys before. I hadn't even seen any of them on social media. Some of them I have. And I think everyone was a bit unsettled and like, what's happening here? And was very laid back, which was so different than what I was used to after the retreats last year. It's like, do this, do that, show up this time, get up early, go to bed late. We've got to do this, 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 which served an amazing purpose at the time. But this was so different. And the people running the event and everything, the locals, they were amazing. They were so welcoming and full of love and appreciation that we were even there. That was special in itself. And it was something I wasn't ready for either. Something I had to work on too. And as it, it came more evident to myself all the way through. Now, it rolled out. And we the first, the first day, oh my God. I don't know if anyone on here has heard of a tobacco cleanse and please laugh at this or whatever. This was crazy. I wasn't ready for this or prepared. We went outside um, to a special spot and they, they rolled out the blankets outside and it was a lovely day and little buckets around everywhere, a big pot of sort of warm water in the middle and uh, all right, what's going on here? And they explained that we were going to do a tobacco purge. Now, this was like tobacco extract, whatever it is, their ancient formula into a little shot. They, they do whatever they do. It's, an, it's a crazy process what they go through. I had no interest in it at the time, so I didn't really learn. Um, even with the making of the ayahuasca and the Ushuma, I didn't really have an interest because I was so into, all right, I'm here to release. I'm here to, to work on myself. But we had this little shot and you have that. As soon as you have it, you have to drink seven liters of water straight up seven liters and that's non-stop this stuff burn it works its way through the body seven liters so you can imagine i struggled through the first one i struggled through the second one and then it was like purge like spew and then it'd come up then i'd have to keep pushing and pushing and pushing i ended up drinking eight liters i was head spinning everywhere I had two buckets full of pink watery goo looking stuff because the purpose of this was to get into the stomach but get into the intestines this was the a deep, deep cleanse to start the whole event, to start the retreat. And like I say, I don't know if you guys have heard of that before. I never, I was not expecting that. I was absolutely not. And that's a big reason why I went in with no expectations because I was born. I was 
out of my comfort zone. I'm like, holy crap, what am I in for here? And you can imagine having that mindset now. Here I have a flown 30 hours or 28 hours, paid a, a ridiculous amount of money, which was worth every, every cent. At the time, I'm thinking, what have I got myself into? What is this? Because I was like laying down at hot flushes and sweating. I just filled two buckets with spew from drinking all this water. I'm like, what is going on? And that was the start of me having to really, I was fighting. I was like, I don't really want to give in to all this. This is crazy. I understand the deep cleanse. I understand it. But what's going to be the ayahuasca like? I didn't even know about the Washuma. And I come away from that. I didn't feel too bad after that. I was very lightheaded and all that. But later on that night, we went into ceremony. And this was on a cleanse. No food, none of that sort of stuff. Um, the diet, if I must mention the diet too, this is really, really important too, even leading into it. Um, I was just vegetarian, no salt, no sugar. No herbs and spices, none of that stuff. No processed foods. Now, a couple of days into that, and that was tough. I had a couple of shakes because I was like, mm -hmm. and it didn't matter in the end. They call it dieta, diet. Um, so into that, the, the first ayahuasca ceremony. Now, the ayahuasca, I'd love you to do some proper research. I'm not going to go into where it's from and all that sort of stuff. I'm going to save a lot of that um, for something I'm going to put on my website. Um, where I've done a video journal from the whole retreat, something I'm not sharing on social media. It's going to give an in-depth look in how I was feeling, how everything was going. It's going to be more info in that. But the ayahuasca is a ceremony. Um, oh, I can't even remember the name of the place it was in. It was just this amazing little, little big heart, polished floors, awesome. Oh, it'll come to me soon what it was called. Um, but we were in there, set up around in beds. The buckets were around there again. We got a brief rundown we're probably going to be sick we might go to the toilet same thing again little shot glass but there's a ceremony there and what i will say with with this and a big thing i learned is setting intentions is so powerful i already knew this but now i know it a hundred thousand percent more how important it is to set intentions for everything you do that's probably there's no number one learning out of this but for me going forward that's something i'm definitely definitely well, I already have put in a massive action straight away. Every single thing I do is going to have a solid intention. But for that, let a solid intention with the preparation of the ayahuasca, they sing to the ayahuasca. You've got to remember everything is cells, everything, right through nature. Everything we're made of is cells and our programs, the program by our speak, our words, by song, by vibration. So this has been programmed. And later on, I found out what happens when they sing to it again. But... You go in there and you start, you could call it praying, but you set intentions to it. This is what I'm going to do. And my intention for that was, I'm not sure what's going to happen. I'm going to enjoy the process. What if I'm sick? Whatever it is, I'm going to release a bit. Whatever comes up, I'm going to go with it. If more comes up, I'm feeling good, I'm going to go. Because I had no idea. No idea. Now, the ceremony started. We had the shot. It tasted like Sambuca, I'm pretty sure. But I was saying in my head, E-shot, E-shot, E-shot. <laughs> But that's what I was saying because I did, did not know what was going to happen. One sec. And the ceremony went on and there was blessings. It was given understanding of it all. And I wasn't really listening then because I was nervous. It was all shit. I was like, what, what's going to go on here? I've got no idea. I've just let myself into this. I was questioning after the tobacco purge. That was crazy. It was like, I don't want to do that again. I'll probably do it again because it has massive benefits. But... Went into that, went through and went around and everyone had their shot and it was silent and I think it was 10 minutes and I spewed in the bucket. I'm like, is that right? Is that meant to happen? Didn't know. Didn't know. Nothing was really happening. Everyone else was, whatever, it's hallucinogenic. I can't explain what everyone else was going through, but people were, were moving around and it, it was the medicine was working. Now, with me, I'm like, should I have more? All these people are, are getting like results out of this. They're actually like enjoying it and some weren't enjoying it and uh, stuff coming up and I've been sick as well like an hour later. Then the option came for the second lot. I'm like, yeah, I want to know what this is all about. Something that came up with me that night, this is really, really important because it set off some layers of stuff that came up. Now, a lot of my past is 
party drugs, like crazy for probably 13 or 14 years. It was crazy. It was like nearly every weekend. And I went through a lot of issues. It led to a lot of violence, a lot of anger. Um, and, and it was bad. And it's stuff I've worked on. Like I nearly went to jail three times. There was so much stuff. I had a reminder that night when my ego got in. When I go, oh, I want more, I want more. I want more, I want more of an effect. That's, that was a reminder. That was like the first sign. It went away. Um, then I, it, was, it was great. I had a fair bit of stuff come up. I was sick again later in the night. Felt crazy weird. I was seeing shit, all that sort of stuff. But some stuff come up just related to my past. It wasn't major. It wasn't crazy. I'm like, and it was an enjoyable experience. In my journals, I share more, but it was an enjoyable experience. It was like, well, that was so different. I feel good after that. Some stuff come up. I, I did a couple of video blogs. I wrote a couple of things down. I'm like, well, this is, this is pretty cool. I can handle this. It's good. And if I don't talk too long, you'll get to the end. You'll see why this is important, why I thought. I didn't see the first one as really significant. I'm like, I can handle this now. I can do whatever. I can roll through this. Then we had a rest day the next day. We got plenty of ample time to rest. It was so different than what I'm used to. Um, and it was a big test the whole way through, guys. A big, big test. Um, the food, being away, being nervous, being around people I didn't know. I had to be vulnerable in people in front of the, I didn't know. All the way through this, we were all vulnerable. We didn't know each other really well. I knew Regan and all that. I didn't know one part of that well. I didn't know. And that's something where we go like this. In any situation in life, anything, it's you put your guard up. You don't want to let people in. And in a situation like this, even though I was there for my own personal reasons, it was a group thing too. Like I didn't want to infect any, affect anyone else's journey. I don't want to be loud or anything like that. But it was, it was stuff that was rolling through my head. And I'll be honest, I had so much stuff going through my head leading into this for months. Um, but while I was over there, even more so. It was crazy and I notice it now. I didn't think it was a problem then. I knew it was happening, but I'm like, this isn't really affecting me. I'm, I'm sweet. I'm doing my routines. I've, I'm doing all my stuff. I'm learning. Yeah, shit's not going right, but it's not. I'm fine. That's, that's, that was my mindset. Boy, was I fucking wrong. <laughs> but we rolled out, had the rest day, which was great. Um, got to get to know each other a bit better. The food was painful. It was there. I was so hungry, no snacks or anything, just the three meals. What else went on through this? The structure's good. I'm not going to give away too much of this, guys. I said we worked on the body. Now, one part is an absolute genius. The man has got so much experience and the way that him and Regan structured this was absolutely phenomenal. It, I don't think it's ever been done before. I don't think it has interlinking what they've done with the plant medicine and the ceremonies, not just yoga, not just yoga, like shamanic work mixed from different ancient cultures. Like I say, one part has got so much knowledge linked into the body, the organs, the cells, so much linked into the diet we were on. So every morning we missed maybe two mornings. I missed one morning because I was very, oh, I wasn't the best. Um, but every morning we did something different linked into releasing from the body. I can't really explain it. I've learned a lot. I was doing a lot of yoga leading into it. This took it to somewhat of an extreme new level. Something I, I realized I had to work on a while ago was my breathing. Um, and this, wow, well, have I learned some techniques that make a massive difference to releasing and letting go. It's not just saying, hey, let that go. You, your body reacts. You consciously protect yourself to keep it in. And there's ways you can release linked into your organs, your chakras. So much more I learned about, and I'm going to get to something soon that's going to help you learn about that. Um, but I rolled out, and then we got into the Wachuma. Now, the Wachuma, I was calling Machuma for the start. I was a little bit lost, but it's like a special cactus. And same thing. They, they sing to it. They sing to it. on a cellular level. They program it, whatever. You have that, and that is more grounded. Ayahuasca is like up in the air. The which humor's grounded, opens up your heart. All this is about getting out of there and into here too, guys, and cleansing your body and releasing from all parts of your body, all this, but big part of it. And like, oh, cool, something different than the last one because I felt pretty crook after the last one, even though I handled it pretty well. Um, and that was the most fun day ever. And that's when this stuff started. That's when you hear downloads all the time and I didn't understand that. I'd released enough 
from the first ceremony that I just started writing all this stuff about nature and being connected to nature. And yeah, you see a bit of stuff and everything's bright. We had other herbs and other um, medicines to, to really brighten our vision. Vision went a bit blurry and wonky. I'm not going to go into too much details because it was different for everyone. But that was an amazing, amazing day. I still felt weird, but we went into the night. We were laughing. Everyone was happy. We all bonded. That was amazing. I got bitten by a million mosquitoes and ants. I'm covered in sores and stuff. My ego was taken over there too. I'm like, I don't get bitten ever at home. I got smashed. Um, but yeah, we rolled in the wood humor. That was so different. It was so grounding. I think I laid in the hammock for about five hours of the chair. I was, uh, Regan was picking on me for sitting in the chair like grandpa, just looking at nature and looking at all the, there was so much going on. The moths, the butterflies, caterpillars, animals, whatever. There was monkeys there. I didn't go near monkeys. I'm not a fan of monkeys. They're like koalas to me. I don't know. Not a fan of them. But that that was that was that was a crazy day. Seeing a lot of stuff, but it ended around the fire, all having a laugh at the silliest stuff, and it was great. And I'm like, me coming away from that, I'm like, well, this isn't so bad. What what's going to surprise me? I started to get comfortable. <laughs> no, 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 no. Bad move. <laughs> Bad move. Then we had a rest day, um, which was awesome. And all the rest days, a couple of rest days went out and about. I shared some pictures on social media. I don't want to go into too much detail about that because they were rest days. But Peru is an amazing country. It reminded me so much of home. Amazing waterfalls and big rivers and this old dodgy barge. It was a bit weird. I don't know if they got crocs over there or caimans or whatever, but oh, wow, wouldn't want one of them barges to go to. But we, we enjoyed the rest days. They're, they were important to have your own space, hang out with the group, whatever you wanted to do. There was other people on their own journeys there as well. We could interlink with them and have a chat to them. Um, Zach, the chef, done an amazing job. He was a cool dude too. But rest days were there, very well structured. But on the rest days, we done some other work. This is where Regan come into play here too. A um, lot of mindset, a lot of deep stuff, family consolation work, which is so, so powerful so powerful it affects seven generations down and up and that was that went over two sessions that was nuts that was nuts and the effects from that on a on a on an unconscious level are going to be seen across all the families there but affects families of families and everywhere that was interlinked with the work we we're doing linked in with one pass work with the body with the organs with the releasing with the breathing with the plant medicine and the ceremonies um, and this started to unfold and I started started like having these little breakthroughs, like these realizations, like why has that come up? Why, why has this come up? What's this? And I started writing. On one of them days I've actually written um, was on the day of the Washuma. I don't write that much either, guys. I'll be straight up honest. I've had a massive writing block, journaling block, all that, and now I'm like, wow. I've gone out and I've like just, I've come out with some stuff that I'm releasing later on. I've had these massive blocks, massive. When I come away from Beastman, I'm like, I don't really want to do the coaching anymore. It didn't feel right. If that's how it's got to be, I don't really want to do it. I was talking to so many broken people, so many. Yes, I want to help them, but they, they've got to help themselves. And it really put me off that stuff. But when I started unlocking a lot of this stuff, it was holding me back. And like, just own that shit. There's so many more people you can help out there that, that want to go on these journeys, that want to do personal growth and development. You can help them. I don't invest my time and money for nothing. And that's what was coming up for me. I was actually getting a bit cranky with myself. I'm like, why am I procrastinating? Why do I make these choices not to go through with stuff? So I've come out and just done a structure for like a coaching plan leading into retreats very, very soon in Oz. Um, it's not the point of the webinar, but that's the stuff that came up. And I've, I've written down structures and everything all in an afternoon. Stuff I've been holding back on. Powerful stuff when you start unlocking all this stuff away from your head and all that scatter. I'm going to stop and have a drink. If you just want to drop some questions in, guys, because um, the cool part's coming now. This is, this is where I go deep. I think Simon's raised his hand. Anyone has got questions, you've got the Q&A box down the bottom or the chat box down there, guys. I appreciate you being on there too. Like I say, I'm probably talking fast. I have a lot to cover in this hour. Thank you, Lee and Cal. It is gold. There's so much gold, my goodness. I wish I could share it all, but 
for the point of this, I can share some really key points. Um, and just to pick your interest too, guys, there is another one of these happening in October. But just to let you know, this is not just something you can just say, hey, I want to do that and go. Um, point being, and the reason I'm giving you is an understanding of the outline of this event is there's so much stuff out there where people go over there and do it for a day and they're like, I've had ayahuasca. Yeah, I tripped out. Fantastic, phenomenal, whatever. What do we got? Simon. And the, the purpose of this was called releasing into abundance. It's releasing into abundance. So you've got to release a lot of stuff and it was structured for that under the guidance, not of just Regan and Wampa have got amazing experience, but of the local... The, the grandmas from the Amazon, the shamans, the work they've done passed down for thousands of years at the retreat itself, the people there, this is what they do and it's, it's tradition. Um, and that's why with, with this going for 10 days with the diet, there's so many out there, it's like I go do ayahuasca, but they're just not doing the right diet. You've got to take so much away from the body. No salt. That's crazy. How much cravings you get. But there's one happening in October and it's application only. Um, like I say, I was back with the boys discussing this with Regan for a lot. It's application only. Hit me up after about it. It's not the point of this year. It's not a call to action for it. This is to just give you an insight into why, why I chose to do it and a bit of what happened there. You know, I felt called to do it. I really did. I don't know if I'll go back in October. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. I've got a lot of stuff to put into action. I don't know if I can put myself through some of the terrifying stuff we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, but the, it is there, guys. If you feel called to do something different, if you are in your personal growth and development, if you want to learn more, it's definitely something to look into is what I'm saying. It definitely is. But it's me. It's my, it's my biggest life-changing experience ever scared the shit out of me a lot. It got me the most vulnerable I have ever, ever been. And yeah, like right now, I don't want to go back. <laughs> like I say, some stuff come up that scared the crap out of me. Some things happened like that scared me. And that was the point. So I'll roll on if there's no questions yet. Roll on and I'm just going to like briefly go through a bit more. I'm going to wrap this up in about 20 minutes. but. The second session of ayahuasca absolutely rattled the shit out of me. Like it scared me, it rocked me, it took me to places that I thought were gone. Um, I was scared of the singing. I was trying to escape. I went outside and couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't see properly. I couldn't be. I couldn't be sick. But the thing I did, I set the intention. I wrote a page here. Where is it? It's two pages. What I was releasing. I set the intention. Go back to the point. I set this intention. Now I've been through the first ceremony. Now I'm going all out. In my head, I'm like, fuck this. I'm just going all out. I say, I was in there at the ceremony while they were singing and getting ready. I was like, I release past guilt. I release this. Guilt was huge. I release judgment and criticism. I release the feeling of not being good enough. I release writing blocks, learning blocks. Guilt come up again. The need for, for significance, all these sorts of things. I was release, release, release. I was going through my head. I'm like, boom, 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 boom. Crazy stuff going on in my head. I'm like, I'm getting rid of this. I'm getting rid of this. I've got to make space for this. In my head, I was going nuts. I was going all out. I had a full glass of this stuff. And I'm like, well, the first one was okay. I could handle that. I was a bit sick. And seriously, this took me, guys, to the scariest places all at once that I've been in life. It, it screwed with my head so much. I was lying there. I was coming out with gibberish and words and noises and little yelps and everything. I wanted to get out of there. But why I wanted to do that? Because what was happening in my head was what was going on leading into it. The last six months, all this scatter, all this noise, all these voices, all these things, all these things happening, everything going wrong, it was all coming up. Everything had gone wrong in my life where I didn't properly learn the lesson, where I held on to guilt for doing things wrong, where I held on to guilt for letting people down. I didn't know this. I, I said release, 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 but all this stuff kept coming up and it was like a freaking meltdown in my mind and I got scared because I couldn't control it. I couldn't shut up. I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop the noise. 
I couldn't for hours and hours. I got smashed by a mozzie. You see my neck and everything outside. I couldn't see, but they let me go. They got me back inside. I couldn't handle the scene where they were, remember on a cellular level, they speak to the medicine. They sing to the medicine. When on the cellular level and really, really remember this, guys, what you say is powerful because your cells listen. You program your cells by what you say. So if you're negative and you're always down, guess what? You're going to store stuff in your fat and your organs and everything. Same with the medicine. They sing to it and it reacts with your body. Hence all this stuff going on. I couldn't handle it. It was like, and it scared me. And it took me to all the times where I took too many drugs, where I drank too much, where I belted someone up, where I got in a fire, where I was locked up in the police station, where I was scared and had no control, where I was in court. All this stuff come up at once. That was a fucking nightmare for me. It was, it seriously was a nightmare. And I go to the point, guys, you don't know, you don't have to have a crazy past like I have, you don't. But if you hold on to stuff, anything as little as it is, you'll hold on to that forever. You don't want to have to do what I did to go through all this in my head. That was fucking crazy. It really was. I did not know what to do because I was not, my conscious, this is the point of the medicine. It gets past your conscious protection. It gets past all that stuff. And when it started to stop, I went back inside. I laid down. I lost, couldn't handle it. The blessings, anything. I couldn't. But I laid down and then I started saying, I surrender and be present. Be present. I'll, I'll, I'll start to think, I don't want to affect everyone else's journey. They might be enjoying this. Be present. Bring yourself down. And that... That's a huge lesson for life for me because so many things can be solved by just being present, by taking a few deep breaths, just going within. Don't let this get in the way. That's not in charge of you. This is in charge of you. Simple as that. That's in charge. You go in there, that goes away. Serious. You've got to practice it, but guys. You've got to practice it. You've got to use certain tools, certain strategies over and over and over to get away from that, be it meditations, workshops, courses, coaches, seminars. It doesn't have to be something like the plant medicine. It doesn't have to be because it's just about you controlling this stuff, being worried about what people think, being worried about people judging you, being worried about people putting you down for all this stuff. It's just life stuff. We all stuff up. We all do little things that we make into big things. That was me. And this all came out in one. So many lessons from this. Like, wow. Like, that was crazy. But when I surrendered, it was fantastic. It was peaceful. The voices stopped. Apparently, I was making some really cool noises and I turned into some mushroom. I was seeing shit. I was. And what do we got, Andrew? Here yeah, cheers for being on, Andrew. I appreciate it. Appreciate everyone being on, really, too. I'm, I'm pushing a lot of info into this. It was for a reason, but because what I've come out with over the after that there, that scared me. The next day, I was worried about what people thought of me. I was freaking out. I'm like, did I interrupt any of them? What did I say out loud? I remembered some of the stuff I said out loud, and it was some fucked up stuff. Not at anyone, but stuff that I held on to my head. There was lots of judgment in there. There was lots of criticism in there. Lots of things I've done in my past. I was just like, blah, 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 blah. That's scary stuff, guys. But there was a safe, protective environment. They understood. And to have that feeling the next day when everyone's about, we had a rest day, we went out and about, that was amazing. I was like, this is why I'm doing this. It was such a turnaround for me. That was past the protection. That was past everything I held on to. That was, that was massive for me. So then it rolled on and then we were meant to do with Shuma the next day, not, not the rest day, the next day. <laughs> I'm just getting some cool messages there. It's awesome. But Lost my train of thought. That was a really, really cool message. I appreciate all the messages too, guys. They've been absolutely fantastic. They do they do touch me and I, I am really, really grateful for them all. You guys that are on and watch the recording and that, especially the ones that say, are you all right? Oh, some stages I wasn't, but 
quickly go through the rest of the retreat. That was my turning point. That was. That put so many bad thoughts in my head about how bad the rest of it was going to go. What's going to go on next? What's happening? Oh, no, shit. What are people thinking? But I always had that grounded presence there to everyone else was going on their own journey. And they accepted that that was a tough night for me. They accepted I was going through a lot of stuff. They probably didn't care because they were going through their stuff. That's the truth of it, which was super cool. But rolled on. Meant to do with tumor again. The first one I had that, I had fun. I, I filled another, like, nearly a whole journal this rest day too, guys. It was crazy. Come up with some great stuff. Wrote a chapter to a book I've got coming out. Um, the last chapter, believe it or not. I've uh, done some more video blogs. I've planned what's going on my website. This was all happening after I'd gone through my most vulnerable and scary moment ever. Key point there, guys. Key point. This is on an extreme level too. But then what they did, they go, we're going to have another ayahuasca ceremony in the daytime. I'm like, what? Okay, it's going to be different. And I was really, really battling in my head. The last one scared the shit out of me. I'm like, I'm not going to do it. I nearly got to, got to the ceremony everything. I had a little bit. That was probably the best day of the whole thing because I came out with so much stuff. After I released so much a couple of nights before, when you release stuff and let stuff go, you create space. Release into abundance, it comes in. The answers come. Key point here too, guys, the answers are within. This was all coming from in me. I wasn't being told anything. I wasn't being doing this. All this sorts of stuff. It was coming to me. Went through that ceremony. I couldn't be sick. I wasn't sick the second one. I was very No, I wasn't sick the second one. I went to the toilet a lot because um, you get the medicine out of you. has to come out. Went through that and a lot comes to me. I enjoyed a lot of it. I hated a lot of it. Um, but I learned a lot. So much stuff and all be present. Be present. Every time I started self-talk saying be present, get in your heart, be present, enjoy, be present, be grateful, be grateful. Body listen, cells listen, the medicine listen. And it just like expands it. It just really, really expands what you say in the medicine. That's all I could really put on it. And that was great. And I learned a lot from that. I learned a lot. And being present is so key here, guys. Being present. Present with yourself in your physical body. Saying you are light. Your cells are light. That's what they are. That's what we're made of. Then it rolled out um, some more great work, some releasing negative emotions, which I already do. I know how to do that. I had a lot to let go myself. And that was phenomenal. LinkedIn. LinkedIn and a couple of you guys have done the releasing negative emotions, but this was linked in with the shamanic work, the alchemy and everything from one part. Oh my God. That was amazing. Releasing stuff from our organs, pushing the body past where you used to, to release and breathing and not breathing and holding your breath and doing physical motions. And that was unbelievable. And it's stuff that I've learned, stuff that I'm introducing into something I'm going to talk about very, very soon. Um, going forward because it, it was so bloody powerful it was crazy where my mind went when i had space it was crazy where my mind could go to release when i created space by being vulnerable by, by surrendering it's a key point in life guys i'm going to keep saying it and again it's going to be a theme of mine going forward for sure um then we went into another rest day i think without going into too much we're done with schumer again I didn't want to do it. The first one was enjoyable. The second one was different. We done a second one in there. It was it was different. Actually, was it? I can't even remember if I did two or three. No, we only did two. My bad. I'm not even looking in notes here, guys, because the last one was like, you know, you have an empty out of order. There's always more. I thought there wasn't. <laughs> I enjoyed the first one. They switched it up a bit. The ceremony was different. They were singing. Brought up the ayahuasca thoughts, the bad ones. I had a Big release that day too. It was massive. It was crazy, crazy massive. And I come out with so much stuff that scared me again. And I faced it. And I faced it. It's all about doing the work. You're here doing the work, doing the work. And I faced it. And that was hard. I couldn't sleep that night. I was seeing shit. It was not the same as the first time. I couldn't eat properly. It was crazy. We were allowed to eat fruit that day. I had um, papaya there when we had the cactus juice. I had a big glass too. 
ego. Ego still got me again. I'm like, oh, I'll be fine. Have it. Just go. Silly, silly, silly. But I had that. We had fruit that day. It tastes unbelievable. I was pretty sick, but it wouldn't go away. It wouldn't go into the night. I didn't have any sleep and just kept coming and coming and taught me big lessons about my ego. Same thing as I started on with the drugs and all that. That all came up again. Got me in a lot of trouble, but it, it had me scared again and it had to happen. And that was like a final release. It was like a final release. But then to round out everything with all the work we've done, we've done more work with Regan, more work with the body, the plant medicines, the ceremonies, the bonding was amazing. The vulnerability was unbelievable. Releasing negative emotions was what it was all about. Not to be taught anything. Other retreats I've gone to in the past are to teach you stuff. Put stuff in hand. My stuff's already in there. I've got a lifetime of experience. We've all got a lifetime of experience. It just started being remembered. It all came out. It's like, wow. It was like I was free. And this was the last day. It's just like, wow. And even happening now, I've had hardly any sleep and I've got all this stuff coming up. And that's probably the gist of the journey, guys. That, that is the gist of the journey. There's so much more deep stuff in there without being too on a deeper level. And like, I've got to wrap this up. I've actually got to go to the airport and pick up Chi Chi, who I fucking miss like crazy. But there's so much of that. Throw some questions at me. I've got a couple of little things to talk about. I dropped some hints all the way through there. Ask some hard questions, guys. Serious. I'm open to it. Hard questions. I'm going to be silent until I get to make me vulnerable, guys. Serious. Taking hallucinogenics, for God's sake. Talk about it. I'm just going to double check my internet here in the hotel. These are all quiet. Do you all know how to type? <laughs> like I say, I'm not going to share a lot of this stuff out of here. I'm not. So this is your one and only opportunity to ask me some questions. Even people who are close to me, I'm not going to share a lot of this, guys. How deep did the trip go? Did I cross over with a vision? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, Cal or Lee. Massive vision. I already had a big vision and a big reason I left last year from Beast Mode because my vision was totally different. But working with people again on a personal level is definitely working with Chi Chi on this, this program we've got coming out. Well, it starts on the 22nd. I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. That was huge at the core of this. That was massive. The releasing negative emotions now that I've been through the journey and I understand on such a deep level how much we we suppress, even if it's little, and how much it does affect us, not just in here, but in our bodies. That is deep, deep shit. Like I I had it, I thought what I'd do is ask for these visions to show up, but it's the stuff that I've learned, stuff I know. Stuff we all know. They're our ideas. It's our imagination. It's just projected. Our aura is just expanded and it comes out. That's all this plant medicine does. There's nothing we've told or anything along the way. We're not guided to say, well, this is, should be yours. It's not a life purpose exercise. We didn't do any of that. This was what comes from a deeper level. All the hurt, all the guilt, all the embarrassment, all that sort of stuff is the stuff that holds us back. But there are ways to get to get it out. It doesn't have to be through ayahuasca. And this is my vision. It's like people don't have to do this. Why should you go through something that terrifies the shit out of you to release negative emotion? I spoke about stuff I've already learned, a few techniques and everything. I'm going to be putting them into the eight-week program me and Chi Chi have got. Stuff I've been scared to do, but I'm fucking good at. That's the stuff I hold in deep. And I am good at that. And admitting to that, that, that was a big thing for me. It was a huge thing. 
fascinating how the ideas come within, like your retreat ideas have been to you all along, how the physical body is impacted. Um, it stores it, guys. This is this is key takeaway. It stores it in the cells. Going through the chakras, um, all the body parts, the organs, and feeling the physical release when you set intent is crazy. Like I lost a shitload of weight, but I feel fantastic. I like, especially around like my kidneys, my liver, all that sort of stuff. It is nuts. And it's where we store this stuff in our cells, in our parts of our body. So I've learned a lot of that. And um, that's, that's what's come out. Um, throw some more at me. I don't know what this internet's going to do, guys. It's um, the hotel. It's meant to go for an hour. If it cuts out, I'll be a little bit annoyed. Other thing too, guys. It's cool to have negative emotions. It's okay because that's why we suppress them because we don't want people to know. So accept that shit. Own it. That's really, really important. Really important. Please don't go internet. What I want to quickly talk about, can storing negative emotions cause pains in the body? Yes, absolutely. Yes, it can. This is a big thing I've learned too. I've learned some phenomenal techniques interlinked with the guided stuff be it guided meditation releasing negative emotions there's some other exercise which i'm introducing into the eight-week program that starts this week and i'm going to talk about that now because that's a big thing that's come out of it for me and it's a big thing i can bring to other people at an affordable price it's it's crazy and i really really want to do it because it works it is amazing i've used it before in one of my other programs but this is to another level, giving you specifics around physical activities you can do to release it at the same time as being guided, getting past your conscious mind that protects you. Uh, thank you, Tanya, for being on. I'm just going to quickly share. Like I say, I really, really want to share this. I'm super excited about this. Big reason I wanted to share this tonight, if I don't share what I've created out of this and what's come up so I can help others, my journey means nothing, seriously. Because to contribute to others is what it's all about. My life experience is there, but if I don't learn from it to pass on to others, it's a waste. I might as well just exist. So I just want to go into this now. Fuck, Chi Chi does an amazing job. Picks cool pictures of me too. So this is eight weeks, eight week course. And we've released it just minorly before this, but it's eight weeks. Releasing negative emotions is going to be at the core of it, guys. It really is. But it's, it's already structured amazingly with a private Facebook group, um, with weekly trainings from myself or Chi Chi. Um, there's an option for coaching calls where we go deep if you don't want to get vulnerable in the course as much as you would in one-on-one -on -one calls. That is my specialty. It's definitely Chi Chi. She, she has me in tears sometimes. But that is huge. If you've got stuff to release, you don't want to share out in the opening of course or anything, interlinking it with the guided stuff we do, with the exercises we do, that they are powerful. But this course is going over eight weeks where we do it together. That's something that's not really, I know Lee and Cal are doing an amazing one together, the Healthy Mind and Body, I think it is, or something like that project. Correct me if I'm wrong, please put it in there, guys. The other thing we've put into this course is a Q&A. A weekly question and answer so you can get on. It's not just us coming on and saying this, 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 do this. No. It's their design for you guys to get the results. It's designed for that. And the key for results too, because I know what a lot of people are held back with is financial. Now, if I told you exactly how much I invested over the last few years, it's upwards of $60,000 on courses and stuff. It's crazy. Interlinking the retreat, not including all the travel and everything either, guys which is pretty crazy. But this is everything close. Your mind and body project there. We've also, in this course, guys, we've got our own yoga, Yogi. She's come on board. Beth is amazing. We've been doing yoga with her for a while. And we're actually combining with another person to do retreats later in the year. This eight-week course will be brilliant to lead into the retreats we're having too. One sec. So much on here. Like I say, I don't take notes. One thing I'm going to get better at. This internet cuts out. I'm going to be devastated. 
sharing this has been amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I appreciate that. It's why I do this, guys. So we've got two packages. Now, without the coaching calls is a gold. It's got everything else, but without the coaching calls, that's 247 US dollars for eight weeks, training every week, plus a Q&A. Access to me and Chi Chi, like for messages and everything like that too, to an extent. That's only for eight weeks. That's crazy. There's payment plans with this too. Now, with the coaches' calls, which me personally, I would highly recommend, it's 497 US. That's for eight weeks, private Facebook group. That's with the, the coaching calls with me or Chi Chi. You get to decide unless we throw in a spanner in the works. Now, that's a platinum package. Now, we would love to have you guys on or anyone you know who is struggling. This is the thing too, guys. A lot of people don't get on this stuff because they don't want to be see, seen to be vulnerable. They don't want to be seen to be releasing anything in front of everyone. Uh, how much was each pack? 297 US for the gold. So that's everything I mentioned, plus a little bit more, but no coaching calls. Um, and 497 US for the platinum. That's with the coaching calls. There's more details if you send me a message. I'll send you the actual link so you can go through it. And it shows heaps more stuff in there, guys. It's a crazy program. It's step number one for me. Working with Chi Chi is just going to be fantastic. We work really, really well together. Um, she has me stuff sometimes, but I've got massive self-belief in what I'm doing now. A big thing I got out of Peru, guys, self-belief is just booming. Everything I've come out with is just freaking amazing. And, and I'm proud of it too. This is a thing too. I'm definitely proud of it. It's something that I, I was not aware that I would be able to do again because I'd lost a lot of focus and a lot of um, belief in doing it. And this program's the start of it. There are other options. I've got my personal coaching. I'm not going to talk about prices on here because the, my main focus is this eight-week program. We've already got several that have already jumped in from our workshop. We've also got the workshop there, guys. If you want to get a taste of what the eight-week program is going to be like, we've got a three-hour and 20-minute workshop. I can send you the link to. That's 37 USD. That's got two exercises in which are crazy, but we go into the masculine feminine energy, the traits, the six human needs, all this stuff all rolled into that. So you've got that option there too, guys. Stuff that I'd done before I went to retreat, um, the retreat in Peru, but now I've got all this other stuff to add into the eight-week program. I, I think it's definitely something that you need to check out or someone, someone really should get involved in. We wanted to make it affordable as possible. Um, for everyone to go, like I say, there's payment plans. But yeah, that's that's it really, guys. Throw some more questions at me. The internet's still kicking on, which is cool. I'd love to get a couple more questions. Anything about Peru, anything. It can be dark stuff. I'm going to share it in here. Like I say, I've got the website coming out. I've got my, my video blogs from the retreat. I'm going to do a deep ayahuasca journey one. Um, now I'm here in Sydney for a few days. I'm going to do that there because I really wanted to integrate a bit, come back here and, and really go through my notes and share some stuff with a bit of structure. But that's with the video blog. I'm going to have that available on the website soon. Um, and like I said before, if you want to get involved in something like this, send me a message. Application only. It's not just, hey, I want to go do it. It's definitely not that because it's a scary journey, guys. It's like life. It's like... We, we, we hold back from so much. We're scared of so much. We don't do so much because of all the shit we hold on to. And you'll hear this, this thing. It's always coming back to us, our decisions, our choices. It's always us. It's always you. I don't, I don't care if things happen to you. People die. Things happen. Shit happens. The only thing we can control is us and our emotions, how we react, how we how we not react because we're, we're conditioned to react, how we act. So, so important. And doing things like this as a step-by-step -step process, it, it helps it. Being better in, at life, that's what it's about. Getting better all the time, it's what it's all about. No questions? Dave's on, legend. Yeah, that's all right, man. I'll send you the recording. Just going through some stuff here on the side.
Awesome, awesome. Thanks, Lee and Cal. I absolutely appreciate you guys being on. I know you're just super, super, super busy. We will chat a little bit more about this, I'm sure, over the next week or so. Um, anyone else? Um, well, like I say, you want more info on the courses or what else is going on. The retreats, definitely ask, like I say, in Oz. Um, we'll have a proper release about that soon. I am in the zone, Trent. Do I feel... Um, do you know what, Susan? Right now, I feel amazingly cleansed, but I've had stuff come up today. But here's the thing with this. Here's the thing. And this is for everyone who's still on here. Always be aware. Have a knowing that stuff's going to come up, but have a knowing that you can handle it. So many people don't want stuff to come up because they don't feel they can handle it. But you do the work. You do the work to handle it, guys. Stuff's going to come up. So, yeah, Susan, I, I feel totally cleansed, but I'm always aware, I'm always self-aware that stuff's going to come up, but I've got the tools now that I can deal with it if I choose to use it. Being present, learning more to be present, use the body stuff, releasing negative emotion. I've got tools and strategies which we've added. No, a real reason I released the eight-week program and talked to you about that tonight. There's so much of these tools in that program, so much of it. Looking forward to having a chat. Yeah, absolutely, man. Oh, Davo's ready. Awesome, brother. We'll definitely have a chat about that in the next few days. I'm in a, um, I've got an event here in Sydney in the next two days too where I'm going to learn a lot more. So just know this, anything you get involved in with myself or Chi Chi, we're always going to be learning and growing more. It's our number one or number one two value with contribution. That's why, why we make our courses so available to, to as, many, as many people as possible or affordable. Uh, because we don't want to learn all this stuff and not contribute back to others. It's why we do this. It's why we're on this journey. Just know that too, guys. The more you give, the more you get. So if you keep giving, you're going to get more of what you want. And it doesn't have to be material things. You give more love, you get more love. It's as simple as that. Take that as a mantra. So speaking of the love, thank you for the love and being on here, guys. I so do appreciate it. Looking forward to, I've got a few messages come through now and I appreciate them. I'm going to get to them ASAP. Everyone who got on, everyone who's watched the recording of this, please inbox me. There's a few of you that message me now about the recording. Do you think everyone has had bad things in their past life that they need cleansing with? I really don't know where I'm at in it. Yeah, absolutely. You know what? Using the word bad is probably, probably not a good word for it. That's why we suppress it. But we've got stuff. Yeah, everyone's got stuff. You think about it. We grow up, we're this little baby. We're fresh. We've got nothing. We're serious. We're a blank piece of paper of artwork as a baby. We get conditioned with stuff from all around us. Our parents, the school, religions, TV. Fuck, TV. The religions. Oh, I'm spiritual, not religious. Wait, same event Dave and uh, I are going to this week in Melbourne with Tony Robbins. No, nah, it's a bit different, Lee. Bit different. I'll get to that in a sec. Um, but yeah, Simon, there's stuff, man. There is. I've got ways to get into that. I do. I've got these these ways to get past it. There's techniques and everything that you use to, to get you vulnerable. Vulnerability is key. Get out of comfort zone. It's key. That's why I, I'm massive on doing it. Sometimes you've got to be pushed, but sometimes you've got to fly all the way to Peru and have no escape. Sometimes you've got to go all the way to Bali and have no escape. Don't get me wrong. The retreats last year were phenomenal. They have their purpose in every essence of the way. So much in them. But for me, where I'm at right now, Peru was dynamite. Simple as that. And I'm going to have more stuff. Simple as that. So I hope that answered your question there, Mr. Collis. Yeah, I think back to yours, Lee. Now, this is a success industries or something event, and Tony Robbins closes it. He finishes the day on Tuesday. He closes it out. Um, which is cool to go over and see him anyway. There's some guys in um, in uh, World Ventures that do Tony Robbins' Platinum they have for years and I've been talking to them a fair bit about the stuff they do and it's just going to be awesome to see Tony live. I do a lot of Tony Robbins' stuff. Like I follow a lot of his stuff. I learn from a lot of his stuff. Now, I've dived so much into it. There's so much out there, which is amazing. But key to you guys that are still on, I was winding it up, but you guys that are still on, just know this. You can know something, you can read something, you can look at something and do something once or twice. It's a practical action that makes all the difference. 
practicality. I go to retreats because it's practical. That's why I do it. I do courses because it's practical. That's where the real breakthroughs happen, guys. That's, that's the truth. From my own journey, from so many people I've worked with, I keep working with, Regan Hillier herself. Check If you haven't seen Regan, she is phenomenal. She's an amazing friend of mine. She is a superstar international coach. She's an amazing speaker, but she's done the work. Yeah, cheers, Lee. Cheers for being on. Anyway, if there's no more, guys, I appreciate you all so much. I really do share this time on Mother's Day night. Um, I just wanted to get this out. I probably needed three hours to talk about more deep stuff. Hopefully, there's some more questions. If you've got more questions, I'm happy to answer it for the next 20 minutes before I go to the airport. But like I say, it's not much of this stuff's going to come out into the public because it's going to go on my website because a lot of it's a lot of it's private and a lot of it can help a lot of people as long as they value what they want to get out of it. Here's, here's the thing. You've got to value this stuff, guys. You've got to value other people. It doesn't have to be mine. You've got to value the work they've done. Then you'll value the work you do yourself. I'm going to leave on that. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you all. See you next time.